हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल टुडे इज आवर ट्वेंटी एथ एपिसोड एंड यू नो टुडे व्हाट इज द डेट ट्वेंटी एथ मार्च एंड वी आर आल्सो डूइंग द ट्वेंटी एथ एपिसोड सो यू आर वेरी वेरी वेलकम फॉर दिस स्पेशल एपिसोड एंड टुडे व्हाट वी आर डूइंग वी आर डूइंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एपिसोड व्हाट डू वी लर्न फ्रॉम द नेचर बाय वेरी सीनियर साइंटिस्ट ऑफ द आईसर पुणे डॉक्टर अरविंद नाथू but before that let me mention you my name is ashok rupner and i am speaking from the campus of the aisar pune so let me show you the building of the aisar pune so this is our building and i am speaking from this uh, campus and there is a very nice court just if you enter in the main building there is a very nice court let me tell you again that court at uh, the aisar pune fear tomorrow science begins today so this court is very very appropriate for our this series now i am showing you so this is the kind of the virtual tour for you the campus of the aisar pune please see the campus of the aisar pune by this photograph so this is a beautiful campus of the aisar pune here we have various labs and various departments and very very environment um, uh, this educational um, uh, public friendly environment over here now just i am showing you one more photograph here i am speaking with you so this is a our science center Srimati Indraini Balan Science Activity Center and all the activities that outreach activities we are doing um, uh, uh, from this uh, center. So, uh, as I mention you um, today, we have the special uh, lecture by very senior scientist of the Aisar um, Pune, Dr. Arvind Anato. Uh, after the, this uh, his uh, talk, uh, I will introduce one very very inter interesting activity we are doing on the occasion of the Earth Day. that is happening on the 22nd of the april and that is for mainly teachers but i will come back again for that uh, after this uh, uh, talk by uh, dr uh, nathu sir now i am requesting our faculty dr aparna desh pande please introduce dr uh, nathu sir and of course there will be immediately there will be the uh, live session of the dr nathu good morning everyone today we have with us professor arvind nathu who is our go to person for advice on all matters big and small professor nathu has been involved with aisar pune ever since its inception in 2006 and has been tremendously instrumental in getting us where we are today as a senior scientist in organic and medicinal chemistry uh, professor nathu has been associated with ncl and aisar pune for the last 40 years Professor Nathu has a deep connection with Germany and he was awarded Cross Order of Merit which is the highest civilian award for foreigners by the president of Germany in June 2018 for strengthening Indo-German collaboration especially in the field of science education and technology most importantly one crucial thing that all of you the viewers of our sunday series should know about professor nathu is that he is extremely passionate about reaching out to students teachers and motivating the young students to study the sciences he has also been actively involved in the upliftment of the underprivileged and the marginalized communities all over india through his outreach activities such as camps lecture series hands on training etc without further ado I welcome Professor Nathu to this episode of our Aisar Pune Science Activity Center Sunday series. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you and good morning. Uh, thank you, Aparna, for this nice introduction. What uh, what my lecture will contain today is uh, one more very important thing. What we learn from nature. Why it is necessary to learn from nature and so on. what i expect from you is two very very two simple things number one if you observe anything in nature and uh, during the lecture you can under, you can think and put it in the box that this is a obscure thing that i observed in the nature and may be investigated this is number one who knows that one of this may take the india to a pride nobel prize number two if you have any questions you can put it in the chat box this is the topic uh, what we learn from nature this is small building of 2006 where we started the icer started i purposely keep this photograph to start with because at the end i would like to also show how we are now in sprawling 4 lakh square feet 
but when should not forget from where we started and hence this picture please remember when i talk to any student of 10th or 12th class the the very fact that i ask him what he would like to do blindly he says engineering nobody thinks of basic sciences that is mainly because the ignorance and awareness of the careers in basic sciences people feel that you know, there is the, the india cannot do uh, india can do without basic sciences but let me tell you any high technology is always based on high science you take nanotechnology you take biotechnology you take petroleum technology here i have uh, here i have shown both this is the anxiety based research what we talk of basic research and this is application how we distinguish between the two here the boy is trying to find out how it is an anxiety based how here the question is to be replied in different way question is don't ask question how ask the question anyhow you have to get the production anyhow there is no question of how so this is basic difference between the basic science and engineering where it is how here and anyhow here but please remember any high technology is based on high science now when i talk of high science it may essentially means research and there the problem really start a 12 standard boy or even graduate thinks that the research is something completely beyond his uh, reach and this can be done in a very sophisticated uh, sophisticated instruments and all are required today in next uh, 30 40 minutes i would like to show you how easy it is to do research because i'll quote you i'll show you few examples where the one of the biggest technologies developed in the world have been initiated by on basic sciences and basic observation of nature and it need not be by the scientists invariably it was not and how it turned out to be biggest uh, technology to, uh, to be used for the societal use so let's start before that i would like to just show you two slides how our body itself is really a magic i tell you if one starts uh, trying to explore and decide to do carry out the research in our body there is a plenty of chance just four facts i would like to put there are 3000 in interdependent chemical reactions going on in our body in test tube we cannot carry out two reactions even then it observes many laws of thermodynamics and kinetics then prediction of various disorders can be done and ultimately it is a bio computation and bio statistics that will reply this is just to show you how complex is our body structure and gives still lot of unanswered question one of these is very simple you will be surprised that if you just take a spider web and a thread from there and if you enlarge and further enlarge you will see a complex protein structure this simply complex protein structure gives strength to the web cast as uh, it is more than 200000 psi which is stronger than steel and similar to kevlar remember cobweb is much more stronger than steel and is equivalent to kevlar which is used in bulletproof but so very simple things or observation of nature and led to many things don't forget so let's see some of the examples how simple observation of, of nature has led to the solution of many problems and then you will start loving the nature with this man gentleman his name is mark fels and he is a, one of the best swimmers and has won 24 olympic gold medals we remember all together from 1928 we could not even secure half of them half of the gold medals so he was there but if you see his, his dress his dress is something entirely different and it is called as razor o suit why the, and with this razor o suit he ran several races 
See, for swimming, you need two things. One is you should be in a position to swim fast, number one. And secondly, you should be in a position to swim near the surface of the water so that you will be able to swim much better. You can come out, breathe and go. So these are the two things that are required. Then once a fellow went to the London History Museum and saw our great friend, Shark. If you see his structure of the uh, surface of the uh, surface texture of this uh, shark, you will see that very easily. How one can see this? If you go to any museum, first board that is lying there is please don't don't touch the object. This is one museum that is London History Museum. Their board is please touch, feel, and enjoy. And therefore, the scientists at the Natural History Museum got the idea if shark has these properties because of this texture of his skin can we not uh, have a dress made from elastin nylon and polyurethane with this structure so they made the structure they made a suit called razor o suit or laser eye racers and gave it to mark phelps and mark phelps 94 percent of all races were worn and now there are 93 world records. How this is possible? And then when it went, went to a further branch of science called computational fluid dynamics, where the modeling about the shark and the human wing was done, and ultimately they okayed the sticking of the laser hose suit that was given to the Mark Fels, and ultimately Mark Fels could do this. Now there is a completely new branch called mathematics. It is uh, mathematics in athletics by John Barrow and computational flight fluid dynamics is one of the areas. If we talk, there is a lot of science. I don't want to go into this whole science today, but only the two sentences I would like to that drag on human body 780 times than in air. So you can imagine what kind of air resistance it must have and there is a 8% drag on a swimmer. So this is story, ultimately, unfortunately, this cannot be used now. That is mainly because of two things. It's very expensive. The whole of our Olympic budget will be sufficient for only two suits, and it can be used only five to six times, and it takes three hours to reach. So considering this inequality, ultimately, Olympic Olympia team has banned this race and now everybody has to use this. But now it is used to quote the underwater robots. See, what is the best, uh, what is the lesson that you can learn? That if you observe a simple nature, things that, are, that appear in the nature, try to ask them questions. Why? Why Sharsky? How it looks? And all other things. Why? Why not? When? And ultimately, you, when you try to find the answer, that is your research. And believe me, this research in this case, preliminary, the problem was identified not by the scientists, but by a common man. Let's see two more examples of this time. If you see the locomotive engines that were running for maybe 30, 40 years back, which can run only up to 50 to 60 kilometers. Now then, this is the modern diesel engine or the electrical engine. If you see this, the change from, from this nose to this nose is to minimize the air resistance. There is nothing else. So when they wanted now to expedite, people are not happy with 100 kilometers. They would like to have now a bullet train which travels for 340 to 300. How this transition took place from this end to that end? When this was tried for higher speeds, there was a lot of problem. When they were going through the tunnel, that means from one media, one medium to the other medium, they made a lot of sound called shikans and boom. And the people on the both sides were completely dumb. And there was a resistance to this kind of trains running at high speed. So this was, this has been decided that it needs to be changed 
and now it has been changed. How this? Who developed? Who gave spiritual? Let's see in the next slide. Is the Kingfisher. Who did this? And Kingfisher dies from one medium to the other me uh, medium. That is from the air to water. First thing, without making any noise. And secondly, from one medium to uh, another medium, even if it is 800 times denser, it runs very fast. So you see both the quality that we need for Chikansen, our bullet trains are present. Let's see, here I have shown if it is a water and if a normal bird tries to catch the fish and when it enters from one medium to air to water, it makes a lot of sign and fish goes up. Here is a kingfisher. It comes very slowly. In changing the medium, there is absolutely no noise. Catches the fish and goes out. How this is possible? This is because of the design of the beak of the kingfisher. If you see here, the beak of the kingfisher has been dicto copied with some slight modifications into the tree. So simple answer, the simple answer somebody asked, question that somebody asked to Kingfisher, why this, how it can be used, why there should not be any other, and that is the answer. Uh, this is a pope making train, now which runs at 340 to 350 kilometers uh, per hour, but the design has come from Kingfisher. Now there is a lot of science, angle, physics, reduced noise and all other thing, eco-friendliness. I am not going to go into the details. So lesson is one, simple observation of nature, asking the question, give rise to one of the biggest technologies in those days. This is probably simplest example. This is a brand new Macmillan, not a scientist really. He used to go, used to walk every day with his talk. And when they come back, you see these structures, some small bushy structures on this. And he, the, if you try to remove that, it will completely bleed out. So it's a really pathetic situation. This happens in every village in the country. But nobody has bothered to ask why it happens and whether it can be used. When he just tried to enlarge these complete small bushes, you will see here, a bird, bird rock kind of structure, which is Artinum lapa. And if you further enlarge, enlarge, you see here a hook like structure. This hook like structure goes and sits in a very soft skin of the dog and it catches very fast. So, this was there. It's a very simple observation, but nobody has asked the question. Only he asked, took the help of some polymer chemist or the chemist, and decided that he will use, he'll prepare these hooks and mimic the soft skin in the laboratory using various polymers. These are the hooks and soft skin, he used it. And this is the most famous thing that we use in everyday science, that is Velcro. So simple science of Velcro, how it is used in day to day, but the invention or the discovery has come and the inspiration has come from nature. So we should be in a position. I would like to make one point clear. Nature, once you talk, it is everywhere in the world. Where is London, Paris, Pune, Delhi, or small villages of Savantwadi and Banda? That shows when the nature is everywhere, why we cannot keep our eyes open, ask the question, and try to invent something or discover something new. Let's see a few more examples. Let's take very few examples. This is ultimately the bond. I'm not going to talk about James Mark. What I'm going to talk here today is this is a very common affair. These are the plywoods, Ikari woods. When they're stuck together, if you see it here, and gives rise to a ply that is used in our day-to-day -day furniture. Okay. How these two layers are ticked together? By using an adhesive which contains formaldehyde. And this formaldehyde is a very dangerous affair and it can cause cancer. So worldwide, there is a search for alternative. 
and which is one one thing it should be environment friendly and uh, easy to handle so people have gone back again to nature here is for professor kai kim lee from oregon state university one day he went with his friend on the seashore trip in his boat and they wanted to see where is the what is the bottom of the sea if they when they see this bottom of the sea these structures these structures were stick to the bottom of the sea so fast so it took a lot of time to take them out and that is mainly because of these threads that you see here which are called byssus threads because of these byssus threads this thing get stuck to this then an idea came to professor e can we copy or can we mimic these byssus threads which contains mainly the keratin and quinone based proteins can we mimic this and try to use it to make use uh, for the adhesion properties of the furniture he started then with soya protein a mod modification of soya protein produced lot of this uh, mimic of byssus threads called pure bond and this pure bond is the product of what a technology i'm talking their existing technology they are not uh, just a uh, laboratory technology and this pure bond is now worldwide used was awarded greener synthetic pathway unfortunately in india still we use adhesives uh, which contain formalin and other chemicals so my dear friends if somebody would have vision to see what can we what we can learn from nature then things would have been much easier for you and we would have got one more greener pathway record so after seeing all these things you may say oh you are talking of very wild thing of shark on some side i have not gone to the bottom of the sea how i can see but one phenomena that i would like to tell you right now which i am going to show on this bottle slide has not been nobody can deny that i have not seen there is not a single man in this audience or a lady in this audience who has not fallen down fallen down knees broken and the blood has started come out see when the when the knee is broken the messages goes to the brain brain then processes from uh collector to collector's office to mayor to plumber and then the plumber is sent at the right position and within few minutes or the few minutes it get closed off how this has happened people have tried to exploit here i have shown two pictures this is an artery this is completely broken you can see here is broken and the red blood cells and everything materials have come out there is a platelet a component called platelet get that get also exposed to air and once you get this platelets into activated platelets rbcs and other debris they nicely form a complete clot here can you see this this clot looks like this these are the dead rbcs so your wound always looks uh, or the clot always looks slightly straight and this the thread like structure which are very very important they are called activated platelets and because of this activated platelets it gets sealed very fast most important within no time at proper juncture it is sealed so this has happened in everyday life but you are never bothered or i also never bothered how why only this why it is different in different nobody has asked this question a fellow asked this question why and his thought led to one of the biggest technology a million dollar saving technologies what is that let's see in the next picture from russia to germany there is a gas pipeline which takes petroleum from maybe from vladivostok to germany which is about 6000 kilometers can you now imagine that 6000 kilometers out of which 200 goes below the sea if there is a leakage what will happen and prior to when it was established the loss due to this leakages which are under the sea and all other things used to account for 12 to 15% but now when people saw their own 
stopping the leakage when the arteries or the clot forming. What they did, they synthesized these platelets. What I talked about are activated platelets, synthetic platelets called platelet trademark. These platelets were added in Russia when the petrol starts flowing. As, uh, as our brain works, this keeps on flowing. Moment they see or foresee a leakage or the hole, it automatically goes and seals. You don't have to give any, any orders like brain, but it automatically goes and seals and the injector, the requisite amount of platelets are added again. Very simple trick now in practice, and this has brought down the flow or the lo loss during the transit to minimum of 2%. Can you imagine this is a million dollar saving technology by Brinker Technologies from Aberdeen? It sees the leaks in pipeline, including the deep sea, also possible to deduce where the leak has occurred. And the brain knows where the leak has occurred. Similarly, these platelets is a structure of proteins which has been calmed down, also identifies very easy. Mantra, observe the nature, ask the question and get right kind of research problem. And that is, that is why we should be really obliged to nature. Those who are staying at the ports, various ports, when the ship starts coming, the first impression is the bad hot house smell and everybody tries to close it. Why this is biofouling takes place? Biofouling takes place because of the algae, fungi, debris, everything comes and many times the weight of this biofouling or the uh, wastage is as big as 5 to 7 percent. Now you can imagine the diesel that needs increases by 5 percent. It's impossible and time-consuming process to start uh, to start scra uh, scrapping of this. Uh, earlier it used to do, and people used to do it for months together to scrap. Here's Anthony Brennan from the University of Florida. He thought of something else, and he went to our old friend, Shark. Shark is the only fish which doesn't have that biofueling. Otherwise, you take all the fishes, there is typical smell. Sharks are never because Below the fins, there are structures of the shark skin. I don't know, in earlier old days, we used to have a cloth called shark skin with this structure. So because of this structure, they no algae, fungi, nothing gets attached to it or the debris and the things are clear. So now our mantra is ready. You got the details of the shark fin below the fins. You take it out, prepare or synthetically make sharklets. It's called from shark skin. This is a sharklet which has the same surface structures and that can be now I have enlarged it here. And this was used stopping our biofouling at the bottom of the ship as well as to several other things. Here's a test that they carried out. This is a smooth surface. If you see it from zero day zero, there was no infection by 14th day you can see this biofouling and various kinds of infections. If you use sharklet, that is the mimic of the shark skin under the fin, you will be able to see hardly any this thing. So this keeps the bacteria, fungi, algae, everything away. So naturally, nowadays it is, uh, is, it is used in hospital products like catheters, needles, etc. Especially in the operation theater, just before you start, after this all feeling, they give a spray of sharklet to prevent any further infection because sharklet surface does not allow bacteria to. Simple observation of nature and gives to a large technology. This is the lotus leaf. I'm calling, uh, I'm talking of tears of lotus. This is a very simple phenomenon that we have learned in the school that the lotus flower does not gather water. This we have in writing, give reasons for two marks from sixth to 10th standard or so on and so forth. We are given this. We have not made a particular observation. What is that observation? This lotus flower not only allows the water to gather, not to gather the water, 
but also they are fairly clean. That means the dust particles are also not stored up. This is observation. We could have done it in our villages where a lot of lotus uh, particles, if you see comparatively lotus leaves are always cleaner than the other mango leaves and other leaves, whatever you talk. Why this happen? This happens because the surface of the lotus leaf is not a clean, not a smooth surface. I have shown here two pictures. One, considering the lotus leaf surface very smooth here. These are the dust particles. So water flows in and since it is slanting, it moves down uh, the surface and this dust remains as it is. But if the surface is not smooth and it has this particular structure as shown here, this water surface, water droplet that comes in because of the centrifugal force, it forms a circular droplet and again, because of the centrifugal force, it brings down the dirt. So if the surface is like this, then you don't get even the water and the uh, dust particles are removed. If it would have been smooth, then only water would have gone down. So this is a very simple observation. But again, lack of awareness or lack of anxiety to know what is happening uh, in our own campus. If you see this from Lotus, that particular property has been used to design something called Lotusan, which is a self-cleaning paint. Earlier it was done by the Stowe Corporation, but now it has, I think it is now available in India and claimed to prevent algae or microbes because of the typical structure of Lotus leaf which has been uh, mimicked and made into a paint, and that is a loops. So my dear friends, simple technology, like day-to-day -day saving technologies, can be developed by using simple nature. Now let us come to some household thing. In next 10 minutes or so, I'll just talk about some very, very familiar household things. So that now uh, from the sharks to this thing, now I am and from the me, now I'm bringing you to the home where lizards. Moment you say lizards, especially the girls and the ladies, the first explanation is, eee! they're dirty. But are they really dirty? No, they are not dirty. Because one unique property that the lizard has, which we don't have, is they can climb the, they can certainly climb the walls and so on also. Why this is? This is a gecko type of lizards. They have several nanoscopic hairs. If you see this, five-toed feet of a gecko are covered with elastic hair corsetae and the end of this are split into nanoscales here. You can see this, nanoscales, and these are called the spatulae. Only because of this spatulae, they have a unique property of climbing the tree. Why it is so? There is a lot of science. I don't want to go into details. First thing, it was a glue-like action. No, even uh, granular tissues can be attracted. Is it a question of friction? No, because uh, even on the inverted surface, it acts. Is it suction? No, it works in vacuum also. Is it electrostatic? No, it forces even the metal surface. Intramolecular forces, it is not on the smooth surface. So ultimately, people have this came to know and accidentally proven that flexible hair exert van der Waal forces that provide a powerful adhesive effect and gecko tank. Now, you can imagine where this can be used, where we need to cl climb the wall. At many places, if you want to do, use it, where you need to carry certain weight along the wall, without using any energy or anything of that. So people have been successful in copying down the design of this pause on the speculi like structure and converted that into a tape, which is called gecko tape. And now this gecko tape, if you can stick to your shoes, you will be able to climb the wall. But it's still a very, very small, uh, is not is not practical 
now they have come up that 5 kilos weight can go up by using this gecko tapes to the extent of about 10 feet or so it is yet to come you can see the spider man but that is not the only use now there is one indian fellow who has also climbed the wall a very famous uh, hero called sharukh khan has done it in one of the movies but i request not uh, not to try that because it is the science is yet to come to the conclusion now because the vanderwall forces that provide a powerful adhesive effect so people it still in a gecko tapes are now available even i have a sample but it's still in experimental stage and soon you will be able to see that will be able to pop cockroach you will see again the explanation e but are cockroaches useful can we learn something from them certainly yes cockroach has a unique property and that nobody has it can reduce its height to 50% 50% in few seconds therefore if you feel uh, you have a cockroach at home try to catch them cast in a small slit even is it it reduces it spreads its legs and reduces its height and go through this let's see how that happens so first thing cockroach can reduce its height generally uh, it can reduce its height to about half and when it goes uh, when it turns to half it can run very fast it can run 20 times the length its length now if you follow, follow the formula and generally take 180 cm as the length of the man or average man and it comes out that it runs at it has to run at 129.6 km if you consider and which you cannot do even half the minute whereas the cockroaches can run 20 times its uh, length now you will see what is the use you are telling all these thing we have seen that it goes below the sink very fast and all a robot now have been developed by using this science which reduces its height to this extent there are several robots one of them is cram it is called as cram d this is a cram robot that has been developed where it has been used during say earthquake or any other time and you suspect that there is something some uh, below the debris there are some living personality and all that so they attach various sensors to this robo it can reduce depending on the availability of space it reduces is like a cockroach it reduces its height goes below and tries to sense and during the killary uh, this thing and recent uh, earthquake in turkey this was used to detect the living human being and now there are thousands of them are used to find out the life below that but the idea has come completely from our good old household friend cockroach can you imagine same thing as with tiny insects these insects are much better as compared to human being so they are better models for the human being especially upon throne and all of the things the models of the robots that are used are derived from tiny insects for example human binocular sight birds can see in almost 270 degrees even in low light whereas a human you cannot see that you cannot go beyond this 120 they can move to 270 they can see at night they can cover very terrains climb surfaces and provide stability which human being cannot do it because of its inherent property you cannot human being cannot see it in see it during night time so their vision is perfect insect eyes offer greater resolution and panoramic range for exploring the places and where you need to explore the places in a, a regime of your enemy 
you need to use robots completely developed on insect model we'll see some of the models these are the these are the insects and these have been designed these robots i mean they designed on the basis of the tiny insect not on the human being so we should be thankful to them we should be thankful to nature our drone is one of the examples of a drone is not for pizza only but it is now used in spy cameras weather balloons and many other defense equipment and this has come the inspiration has come our theme is what we learn from it this is what we learn we learn ants if you uh, there are several scientists in this country we have spent years together on studying the ant movement ant has one property just do that ant sir you is moving just put one sugar, sugar stain it will avoid it will never cross so it knows how to pass and it takes the path of least resistance this has been studied and now it has been practiced now you'll see what is the use of this all ants rangoli now it has been used by blue dot dhl courier or speed post to find out how to transfer a parcel on the path of least resistance and this has been designed by mathematical modeling the uh, by doing it and we never thought that ants tiny insect they will be all used but please understand everything is useful provided you will be able to try to understand the science below that and it will be used now last few examples these are the termites termites have their typical structure by which the air there are air natural air flow designs if you can see this the natural flow designs and based just on this there are several heights building in chicago and us have been built by using this particular structure which has been taken from the termites to use the minimum use of acs to cool and use the natural cooling system to design that there are many many more example sunlight i don't want to go into details of this only the thing that i can tell you can we have an artificial photosynthesis what we need we need a catalyst for the photosynthesis so now a catalyst has been developed and this catalyst is made up of silicon electronics and all other thing this is coated on a, a small card it looks like just to give you an one feeling it called nocera leaf and this leaf now if you keep it in sunlight is a low cost and mimics the process of photosynthesis now there is a protocol available so you carry this so, uh, small thing in energy continuously for 45 hours without any fluctuation now this is being mimicked several new catalysts have been used and this is not a playing card but this is a artificial leaf like device which can mimic the photosynthesis and gives you more energy this is well power i have several examples if you see the well powers this is a well and if you see the fins they are humpbacks these have been exactly copied down in the design of uh, the power plant or the uh, uh, machine plants and this produces about 20% efficiencies of the wind turbine so there are several we are obliged to but i can keep on talking on the birds alone for several only two things i would like to tell you the wings of the aeroplane have been designed or they taken inspired from the wings of any birds second thing the, the bones of the birds have maximum strength with slightest lightest weight so the weight while building the ship uh, aeroplanes now they take the help and try to mimic the materials that have been used for uh, material which are like bones of the body material of construction bones of the world are the lightest and mechanically strongest so these are now based on this idea polymer based components have been synthesized and used in big industry generally for aeroplane you need a speed and you need a thrust to do that 
and you have separate mechanisms in this. But where from? Whereas in the bird, it provides aeroplane wing changing the shapes, and secondly, the scientist being a complete shape changing thrust upon. It has to come up and wing fast, and that has been completely taken from the birds. Last example, really last example. These are the butterflies with wonderful wings here. Can you see these wings? Wonderful wings. If you see the color and texture of the butterflies, a hint has been taken from the structure and really revolutionized the mobiles construction of mobile screens. Generally, in ICER, we leave something to the imagination of the student. So now I leave this to the audience to think about it. Only one clue I I can give you. You are sitting in a nice classroom. See something very interesting in WhatsApp. Want to see, but you can't see. Teacher uh, takes objection. So you go out under some pretext. You will see nothing because only if you see it in sunlight or normal mobiles, they are completely dark. But now there are mobiles available where you can see all the colors and the beautiful picture that you wanted to see. And the clue. Has come from the beautiful wings, color, and texture of this but wings of the butterfly. So I leave this problem right now to you. Just think about it. You have seen butterflies. You have seen everything. But then, can there are about two hundred patents based on this technology in last five years? So students or the my dear youngsters mainly. Why I taken to you, taken you through the journey of what we learn from nature? Mainly because my intention is you should try to concentrate on the research even at early stage. You may say, "Oh, what is early stage?" You may be a school teacher. You may be a school teacher in college going normal. Keep your eyes open. That is the number one one. Then look for, try to look for something entirely different. And if you see that. Maybe a color of the plant, shape of the leaf. Why this? And ask the questions: Why? Why not? When? How? And so on. And in order to reply this, that becomes your research problem. You don't have to move out of your city, out of your home, to find out the research problem. Then you can take the help of the youngsters, or the young scientists, maybe at ICER or any other places. And you will be able to find out your research problem. Is nothing great? Finding out the research problem, especially in India, is a must because right now we these are the challenges that are currently faced by the Indian youngsters. This is mainly for the youngsters. Energy, as I said, purification of water. Can we design a large scale water filter which can fit to the class? And you just take it from the mud. And get it completely filtered number of times. Then we need to healthcare. Can we design an Indian drugs for Indian diseases like tuberculosis, malaria, dysentery, and so on? Now the question is designing of the new materials for the either the construction of aeroplane shapes, materials that we used this thing. Then the communication. I don't have to even elaborate on that. Environment and the most important is everything at affordable cost. How this will be done at affordable cost? That is by converting our present service industry to knowledge-based economy. And for knowledge-based economy, you need to do research. And these are the challenges that is faced by the youngsters. And these are the challenges for the youngsters. And I had tried, attempted to give a simple view or the simple clue to proceed. Okay, these are the some of the pictures of our campus. Those who have seen the campus, they must have. This is a during the night time. Then we had these are the classrooms of the lecture hall complex. We have all modern gadgets except one old traditional blackboard and chalk which we use mostly. And this is our gate, and uh, where 
one can enter the ICER. I have purposely avoided all the questions related to ICER, how to enter, what is offered in the offing. Perhaps we'll talk something about it later on in the later part of the year. But right now, and what is our vision is to ICER make one of the best international institute of higher scientific caliber instead of students training and schedule. I must tell you, we are lacking in two main methodologies or the basics of science or the research. Number one, that the research and education has to go together, research and train in symbiotic way during your graduation, that is done. And secondly, you need to do the interdisciplinary training, scientific research. Now you cannot go alone in research by sticking to one branch, either the chemistry, biology, and so on and so forth. So we have fundamental subjects like biological mathematics and molecular biophysics dealing with the industry. If you look at the Nobel Prizes, most of the medicine Nobel Prizes are conquered by the chemistry because now all the science, they conquer and they merge into each other at the top level. Unfortunately, in India, we start differentiating between the biology and mathematics and we have a crucial fictitious war of biology and mathematics. So I suggest dissolve your all differences, come together and start learning basic science to bring your country up. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you. Thanks the authorities who have allowed me. Thank for your patience. Listening. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Natu, sir. And we always inspire from your uh, talk. Now, as I mentioned you before this uh, session, ki there is a uh, kind of the competition for the teachers. Now, you know, the 22nd April is celebrated as a Earth Day all over the world. world. More than 193 countries participate in various events. And we at, uh, at ICE are also doing some special uh, activity for the teachers on the occasion of the Earth's Day, uh, Earth Day on the 22nd of the April. And what is that? In collaboration with the Ticklink. The, what is a Ticklink? Ticklink is an organization who creates the great educational resources for the teachers. Now, in collaboration with the uh, Ticklink, we are doing kind of the contest competition for the teacher. The detailed information of that competition is given in the description box. There is a link of the tick, tick link and what is a, a competition. This is mainly for teachers who teaches from 4th standard to the 9th standard of science, mathematics and of course the language. And, and basically we have to create good resource material that can be used in the classroom teachers to support our environment, yeah, our earth. Now, we have made small video on that. So, please see that video and of course, all the detailed information of this contest for the teacher given in the description box by uh, link and that link, you have, if you click on that link, you will get the, all the details. The last uh, date of uh, the taking part in this competition is uh, 10th of the April. Now, please see this video, we just we made yesterday to announce this uh, competition. Share your best is about teachers. It is a contest for teachers for science, maths and English. We are expecting exciting teacher resources that have elements of an active learning classroom. Something that integrates inquiry, peer learning and interaction and at the same time creates awareness about climate changes and environment. We at Ticklings are very excited to work with ICER and other partners to present this event. ICER Pune is a research intensive teaching institute. Besides education and research, outreach is an equally important activity for us. At our Srimati Indrani Balan Science Activity Center, we engage in various outreach activities. Now, with the pandemic disrupting our normal life, we have continued our engagements through the ICER Pune Science Activity Center YouTube channel. We are very excited about 
the share your best contest when teachers share their best resources it has a multiplying effect more teachers and students can benefit from your great ideas when teachers see that their best resource is being used by other students i feel that is the best satisfaction for a teacher sharing also creates a network you receive ideas from many others teachers who are new in the profession will learn from the experience and tools of the experienced teachers imagine learning from best master teacher in the country how to create an exciting class where the students are engaged in an activity or listening with rapt attention and then they burst out in an excitement of an amazing new realization the world today is grappling with the devastating effects of climate change and environmental degradation we believe that climate change literacy is important for everyone education on these issues can be achieved through any subject in an integrated learning experience share your best provides teachers an opportunity to showcase their best resource through such an integrated learning approach in the pandemic technology adoption has increased greatly in the education system we are taking advantage of this to build a larger community of teachers students and parents to make learning fun and relevant sharing creates a network of a different kind you meet with different teachers from different schools you meet people from different organizations like ticklings in this case each of these give us an opportunity to connect and to grow together we look forward to an exciting share your best contest with all our teachers and more such events in the future Uh, thank you very much for this information and definitely i am sure ki all the teachers of course uh, from uh, teaching from the 4 to 9th class will participate uh, in this uh, contest and of course they will support to the uh, uh, environment uh, last and the best now please uh, subscribe this uh, youtube channel and of course we always bring some new things for you every second sunday and the fourth sunday we conduct episodes for you so the next episode will be on 11th of the april, april. meanwhile thank you bye bye